Hello, so today I want to talk about the gravitational potential energy or just gravitational potential at the A-level physics level. So until now, we've learned about the gravitational potential energy as MGH. That's what we have been told, right? Um, but when we're discussing the gravitational potential energy at bodies that are actually far away from the Earth, because usually when we do this, we're talking about things like projectiles, things like, you know, rocks falling off a cliff. They are terribly close to the surface of the Earth. And it's it, this equation is not applicable for objects that are not terribly close to the surface of the Earth. For example, the sun, for example, even the moon. Um, and that's for two reasons. First of all, MGH, this indicates that the electric, uh, the potential energy at Earth is zero, because obviously if height from the surface of the Earth equals to zero, then the energy would be zero, right? That's what it's automatically assuming. And while it is really useful to consider for objects on Earth, for example, you know, you lift a pencil up from your table, you give it a, a gravitational potential energy of one joule, from what it was before, it's not true for objects far away from it. Why is it not true? Well, it's not technically false. It's just that it's very um, inconvenient to set the Earth as like zero gravitational potential energy. Why? Because there's just nothing special about Earth. Um, if we want to talk about the energy between the sun and then the moon, what's the energy difference? What's the energy difference between the sun and the black hole? We would all have to relate it to the Earth. And that's obviously very inconvenient because Earth is just another planet and there's nothing special about it. So we are going to assume that something else that is universally applicable is zero. So that's why it's difficult for relativity, measurement, etc. Also, g, which is basically gravitational constant, when we're talking about this g right here, that's not constant for objects that are far away. This is only constant for objects that are close to the surface of the Earth, which is obviously what we are used to thinking about. But when it comes to bodies outside of the immediate proximity of the Earth, for example, the moon, g will not be 9.81. It's going to be much smaller than that. So therefore, we say that there is a mass at infinity that has zero potential energy. So what does that mean? Well, now that we don't want to set the, you know, surface, so basically this is the Earth, and then we are here, the height equals zero. Now that we don't want to use MGH, we cannot say that the energy when you are on the surface of the Earth is zero, which means we have to set something else to have zero gravitational potential energy. So what has zero gravitational potential energy? What can we set it that way so that it is easier for us to calculate and compare different gravitational potential energies of different places? Well, let's say there's a mass at infinity. And what this means is just that it is a mass that is an infinite number of meters away from Earth. It is as far as we can take it away from any mass possible. What does that mean? It means that it's at a part of the universe where there is absolutely zero gra gravitational field. Because as we know, mass creates gravitational field, right? And so if it's an infinite number of meters away from any mass out there, that means it is in a place where there is perfectly just no gravitational field at all. That's what it's at. When this is this has happened, then it has zero potential energy. And that's what we're going to set it. So now that this is the rule, um, we could talk about, you know, different things. For example, this gravitational potential, which is um, phi, and it's the Greek letter phi. Uh, it's at a point, it is the amount of work done per unit mass in bringing a mass from infinity to the point. So we know that the work done is the energy transfer to something. And so as we can see here, if this little cube, let's say this little cube is a mass, if this mass is at infinity, let's say this line here is much, much longer, so long that we cannot actually draw it out, then this would have a gravitational potential energy of zero, as we have seen from this, this statement right here. So as we come closer to the sun, as we come closer to the sun, there is less and less gravitational potential energy. 
why it's because let's say you have something from the surface of the earth let's say that there's a brick and then you are you know this is you and you are lifting the brick up you are giving it gravitational potential energy as you lift it up right Gravitational potential energy is the amount of work done against forces to kind of give it the position that it needs. It also means that it has sort of the potential to drop back down. Now, when you are an infinite number of meters away from these bodies, you also have a potential, the biggest potential possible to be sucked right back and drop into the sun and stuff like that. If you are here, you have a bigger potential to drop in than something here because this has already dropped in quite a lot so that uh, you don't have to drop in as much. So that's how I would picture gravitational potential energy. When gravitational potential energy is zero, this is the highest it can ever be because this is the most potential it has to drop back into a gravitational field, which means any other position that it has moved would basically be lower than zero. It has a lower gravitational potential energy. So if we read this again, it says, it is the amount of work done per unit mass in bringing a mass from infinity to the point. This Okay, so if we can picture the field lines, probably the field lines may look like this. We are doing work, not against the field lines, but literally in the direction of the field lines. And therefore, we can say that the work done is basically a negative value, although, you know, work is a scalar property, it cannot be negative. It's just because this is set at zero that it's going to be negative as it goes into this gravitational field of anything. Therefore, we conclude that gravitational potential is always negative. And we have this equation, where phi is universal gravitational um, constant, and it's multiplied by the mass of whatever is creating the field. In this case, if this is going to the sun's gravitational field, then it would be the mass of the sun, divided by separation. So if this was here, what is the separation from the center of the sun and the center of the body of mass? And so that is the equation. We could also think about it this way. If, let's say, it goes into the sun and then it comes back out because of its rocket fuel or something, as it moves away from a gravitational field, the gravitational potential energy would increase which means, you know, from a very negative number, it would be a less negative number. That's how it would increase, closer to zero. Because it does work against the gravitational pull of whatever it was, in this case, the sun. And so if we could represent like this, you would have a GPE equals zero over here. Let's say we have a GPE of, of you know, negative 100, although obviously, it's much, much low, it's much, much smaller than that. It's much smaller than these numbers. As you do, as you come out of here, you're doing work that is directly against the field lines of the gravitational field created by the sun, which means that you're going to do work against the forces of the sun. And this is maybe going to lead you to maybe have like negative four. When you go into the earth again, uh, you're going to get maybe negative 60, although it would be a very big difference between the sun and the earth's gravitational potential energy at the bottom of this kind of well, right? So yeah, that's what it basically is. Most importantly, phi equals negative gm divided by r. So previously, we also talked about how um, mass can bend space-time and then it will create this sort of gravitational field and that's why objects tend to accelerate towards other masses in space-time, right? And so from that, we can say that it creates something like this. When we look at it at a more 3D sort of drawing, this is what it would look like. It looks like a well. Um, as I said before, it looks like you put a marble in the middle of a trampoline and it kind of bend it like this. So we say that this is a potential well because it does look like a well. The highest potential is maybe on the edge of the well. 
the lowest potential would be on the surface of whatever is causing this potential well. So G creates this potential well. We live at the bottom of the Earth's potential well. Over here, I put the sun, but if I put the Earth's potential well, it'd probably be more shallow because the Earth is much smaller and has much less ma mass than the sun. Um, and it would probably look something like this. And we are right here. Um, so the sun has a much deeper potential well than the Earth. This is because it has more mass. Uh, the gravitational potential at the surface is much more negative, it's the least, uh, than what it is at the surface of the Earth, because obviously the well is not as deep. The deeper you go into the well, the more negative the potential becomes. So a few things about terminology used in this chapter is basically when we talk about gravitational field strength, for example, G, right? G on Earth is 9.81. You can say this is Newton per kilograms, or you could also say it's meters per second squared. This is basically for the force. How much force, because of gravity, is going to be applied to each unit mass, each kilogram. That's what gravitational field strength is. However, when we talk about the gravitational potential, which is what we just talked about, is how much energy you have per unit mass at any point within this gravitational field and you have the least energy on the deepest part of the gravitational well and we say that it has zero energy when it is at an infinite distance away from any mass whatsoever so yeah gravitational potential energy for a certain body because this is obviously energy divided by unit mass when we want to get how much energy for example you have you can multiply our phi, or sometimes it's pronounced as phi, I'm not very sure which one I should use, but you times that with your mass, and because you know, then you can get rid of the kg, and then you will have the energy. So, for the gravitational potential energy of a certain body, it is going to be gmm divided by r, but however, phi just in and of itself is going to be negative gm divided by r. And that is about it for this gravitational potential.